Hey everyone, my name is Tamara and I am the Paper and Pen Girl. On this channel, we love all things planner related, including the 2022 Power Sheets. I'm going to be sharing with you just a few tips that I think might be important to you on certain pages in the Power Sheets. I'm hoping that these tips are going to kind of help you get a little bit more out of those pages than you might have gotten otherwise. The first page that I wanna share a tip on is page number six. Now, page number six is basically the one that says comparison isn't just the thief of joy, it's the thief of everything. And you do have some um, circles that you can check the boxes on this particular page but i'm going to challenge you to do something a little different nine out of ten we're going to be able to color in each and every one of these circles if it's your first year or even second year using the power sheets right um, but instead of just circling what applies to you on this page, I'm going to challenge you to pick one of the answers that you're circling. For me, that's going to be relationships. And as you circle that, make sure you write a description of how comparison is showing up for you in this particular area. Be as specific as you can, be as thoughtful, as honest as you can in this area. In my companion notebook that I am using, which is my Erin Condren um, notebook, I've already written down something that I'm going to be writing in on this page and I'm telling you I was teary eyed um, because a lot of times while we agree with what's written on the page, we may not take enough time to dig down deeper and give an explanation. And so that's something that I'm going to be doing this year. And I'm doing that also because that specific relationship is something that I am going to be actively and viciously tending this year, right? So I'm going after changing the directive, changing what it is that I'm going to be writing on this page. So that is page number six. And my challenge to you is to pick one area and write out what that, that area um, represents for you and really and truly the things that are holding you hostage um, when it comes to comparison, okay? The next page right next to that is page number seven and this is the About Me page. One of the things I'm going to be doing on this About Me page is I'm going to be retaking, I've done it before, but I'm going to be retaking the, um, the love language test. Not only am I going to be taking it, I'm going to invite my husband and our children to take the love language test. This page asks you, um, you know, ways I'm most encouraged. It asks you ways that you feel motivated. And I feel that the love language test is going to help you to answer some of these more truthfully and more honestly. If you don't know what your love language is, how do you expect to know how you will be able to receive love, right? And so we need to be able to do that. If you're wanting to show love to others, do you know how they receive love in, in, in turn? So that is the second page. And the second tip is to take the love language test. The third page that I'm going to share a tip on is page number nine and it's the what fires me up page right this page stumped me the first year i was like i don't know i don't remember what fires me up and so i actually started doing some of the other prep work pages and then i came back to this page you may not remember the things that fire you up. It's been so long since you've really been fired up about anything, right? Maybe since high school. And now you're like, I don't know what really fires me up or brings me joy anymore. So how do I fill this page out? So my tip is going to be come back to this page 
as you need and as you remember. I would, you know, think about what did I used to enjoy doing a lot that brought a smile to my face, that made me feel alive. And for me, one of those things was playing volleyball. And I hadn't played volleyball, I can't even tell you, in years, right? And so I did write that on my page and had the opportunity to play volleyball with our church. And it was great. Now, mind you, after I did that, I was in pain for a couple days, <laughs> but it still brought me joy. Um, things like reading a nice, big, chunky, fat book where I'm just relaxing and being consumed by it and flipping through the pages, right? Things like that fired me up. And so come back to this page as you remember the things and throughout the year as you realize there are new things that fire you up, be sure to return here and write them down. So the next page that I have a tip for you on is page number 15. Page number 15 is the who I really am and the moving past fear page. So two sections. Let's address the moving past fear box. This is huge. This is a huge box. We all have some type of fear, whether we we admit it or not, right? Um, what is your fear about? If I step out and do this thing, if I step out and be this thing, I'm going to fail. If I do it, I'm going to be embarrassed. If I do it, it's not going to be done well enough. If I do it, what? What? And we let the thought begin and die in our heads. We don't put out on paper those things, identify it and address the fake and address the real. We don't do that, right? And so a lot of times I would let the what if fakeness, I would let that take over. And that would be what dictates my actions moving forward, my belief moving forward. So I love this. And it says fear will try to hold us back from making what matters happen. And so in this particular page, in this particular section, I want you to list all the things that you want to do, right? Because you've already listed some of your goal ideas. And I hope you list some big gigantic ones on there as well. If I were to do this thing, right? I want you to do that for more than just one thing. So it says, if so it says, I fear blank because of blank. Um, if you get it out why you're afraid of it, you can drill down, y'all, and see whether it's logical or not. See whether you really should be afraid of this thing or not. And then make a plan to move and push forward in spite of this fear. The bottom section says, if I were to step into my fear and take action, I would feel. Oh my goodness, how would you feel? and let how you would feel and what the benefits would be to you, to your family, to others, if you push past that fear. Do that for multiple things, not just one thing in the space provided. That's why I said get a notebook and I'm using my um, my Erin Condren notebook with my Yoda cover that says do or do not, there is no try. Go ahead and do it because you'll be glad that you did. So that's my tip for this particular box. Now, if anyone has any other tips, please share them in the comment box below so that others can know certain pages, what could help them to go forward and do even better and deeper thinking, right, for 2022. Now, the final page that I want to share with you is page number 21, and it is my cultivated year page. It says what I'm saying yes to, what I'm saying no to. Um, the header reads, it's time to make some decisions about where you'll spend your time this year and where you won't. Say yes to what matters in the year ahead and no to the things that will hold you back. Be bold. Instead of being bold, I want to say be brutal. Be brutal on this page. Go ahead. Put it in the comment section down below, y'all. Be brutal. And the reason why I say be brutal on this page is for everything that you're saying yes to, 
you're going to need to say no to one to maybe three things, if not more, just so that you can say yes to that one thing. Whatever it is that you're saying no to, what am I now giving myself the ability to open up and say yes to? We've got to have it making sure that it's kind of, I'm saying yes to this, and because I'm saying yes to this, I'm saying no to these things, because these things will hold me back from saying yes to this particular thing, right? Let me share an example with you. For 2021, mm -hmm, in my foolishness, y'all, which is really foolish wisdom, because I didn't really understand what I was saying yes to and what I needed to say no to in order to say yes to those things. I said to myself, self, do you know what you're saying no to this year? And we said, we're saying no to overwhelm. It sounded good. It sounded wonderful. It sounded great. But I did not realize all the other things that I had to say no to in order to say no to overwhelm. And it was all through every single area of my life, y'all. Overwhelm when it comes to the amount of filming and editing I was doing for the channel, cut it off. Like I had to stop doing a lot of those. I had to stop even on Fridays. I no longer do the morning tea on Fridays. In my daily life, in my daily routine, my daily planning, no girl, you need to make sure you have time for nap, time to eat, time to relax. You've got to have time just to sit and breathe. What does that mean? That means I cannot pack every single hour of my day until bedtime. So some of the activities, that, that to-do list, I'm sorry, you have 10 items on there, you can only do five today. You cannot do 10. So I had to say no to some of those things on my to-do list. I had to say no to people who are calling. Listen, I have five minutes that I can speak with you. Is it really important? It's not? Okay, can I schedule you for Wednesday? Yes, wonderful. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. Because I needed that time to be able to tend relationships to write notes and mail out notes, right? That I wanted to, to be able to reconnect with people, right? Because you know that conversation was going to just be about some of the things that we talked about the last time that we talked anyway. Ain't nothing new. How you doing? I'm fine. How the kids? The kids are good. How your kids? They doing great. So what's the problem, right? You know, you know the conversation. And so I had to say no to that. I had to say no to some church activities, girl. And so in order to not be overwhelmed, y'all, I had to cut a lot of that stuff out. But with saying no to overwhelm, it gave me the ability, y'all, to say yes to connecting with people, to being present, to really taking the time to enjoy what I, what I wanna do and not be rushed. Like, wow, it was amazing. And so I really appreciated the fact that I, you know, was able to jot that down on this page. But this year I have a better understanding of when I say no to certain things, woo-wee, woo-wee, wow, it, it can be pretty powerful, please. Make sure you get clear on this page. Get really clear on what you're saying no to, what you're saying yes to, and hopefully that will help you uh, prioritize the things that really matter to you in this upcoming year. My final tip in this video to you is going to be something that I've done over the past two years. One of the prompts that the Cultivate What Matters team placed in this, in the big picture, what will matter and what won't, was when you're 80 years old. Think about it. When you're 80 years old, what's going to matter in the big picture and what's not? I brought that forward, right? I brought it forward, y'all. And I said to myself, Tam, if this 
year, if these 12 months was the only 12 months that you had to make an impact with the choices, with the goals, with the things that you're choosing to cultivate, what things would matter and what things wouldn't? Yeah! Hoo-wee! Oh! Oh! Did that fine-tune things for me? Now, with asking myself that question, that does not mean that I didn't put, you know, five-year goals or three-year goals or things that were going to take longer than a year. I certainly did. I planned those out and I made sure I knew what are these things that you needed to do in this one year that were going to matter the most towards accomplishing that thing, right? What are the things that's going to matter the most? When it comes to your family, what's going to matter the most if this year was the only year that you had? And um, none of us know whether we have a day, a week, a month, a year, 20, 50 years. We don't know. We have absolutely no idea. And so I think we really need to um, take this goal setting session very seriously. I pray that each and every goal area that you are addressing or cultivating in for this upcoming year is fruitful, that it be prosperous, that it brings you joy and it brings you peace in those areas because that's what a lot of us want we want that success and what that success is going to look like is peace it's joy it's being prosperous it's learning so whatever that is for you i wish by the grace of god that it will be accomplished in your life in your 2022 power sheets if you have any questions please feel free to leave them for me in the comment or shoot me a message over on Instagram or on my email. All information is in the description box. Make sure you scroll all the way down to be able to find it. The next power sheet video, which I think is going to be me actually planning out my uh, power sheet goals in my planner. So my power sheets is a pretty mm, personal thing to me. And I don't share a lot of it once I've written inside of my power sheets. However, this year, if I'm able to share any pages, I will. If not, you will still be able to get updates of how I'm doing my goals, etc., on my monthly review and also setting my goals. So I'll be taking the goals out of here and putting them in my Erin Condren Life Planner and I will take you along on that journey to share with you how it's really transitioning from my tending list over to my daily plans. I do have a link in the description box of this video. I am a PowerSheets affiliate and a user, okay, of this product. If you have not purchased yours already or you wanna purchase for someone for a gift, you can do so using my link in the description box. I do appreciate your support in advance for that. Thank you again for tuning in and I will see you on the morning tea Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on my YouTube channel. Be blessed and continue to be a blessing. Bye-bye. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you just a few tips that I have on specific pages. Oh, look at the hair. Ooh, sticking all the way up. It's all the way live. Hold on, y'all. Mm -mm. Redo. Um, it says it takes, I'm sorry. It says it, it says, <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs>